when I was nine years old, I returned to China, to my grandparents' rural community there. And actually seeing the vast plantations, uh, neat arrays of green and brown, really imprinted on me that rigid ideal of agricultural farming. Something that has at its very core remained the same for over 10,000 years. But in today's fashion of innovation, new approaches are devised, such as restorative ocean farming. The cultivation of kelp and other species to in fact benefit the environment instead of harming it. But first, we need to examine the current problems with modern farming. And then we'll look at how restorative ocean farming actually works and how it's better than modern farming. We also look at how it would be a strong fit for New Zealand in particular, as well as its potential pros and cons. Well, frankly, current farming in New Zealand, agricultural farming and dairy farming, has led to an appalling degradation in water quality. Harmful bacteria from feces infesting waterways in which many Kiwis swim. Blooms of algae choking rivers and killing fish in a process called eutrophication. This is where the fertilizers that we use to grow food run off into our waterways and are absorbed by microscopic algae, causing a massive population boom which kills off any aquatic plants and fish. I don't know about you, but does this really contribute to any semblance of the clean, green image that our country prides itself on? Fortunately, however, there is a solution, and it's called restorative ocean farming. The cultivation of kelp and many shellfish species to, in fact, benefit the environment instead of harming it. Such ocean farms consist of kelp forests anchored to long ropes floating between buoys with mussel and scalp nets suspended between them. So how exactly is it better than modern farming, though? Well, first off, restorative ocean farming is one of the most sustainable forms of food production on the planet, requiring absolutely no fresh water, no fertilizers, and no pesticides. Also, ocean farms exploit vertical space much more efficiently by using the entire water column to grow food in a three-dimensional space. And kelp itself is one of the fastest growing organisms on Earth, growing nearly 10 times faster than wheat. That's 10 times the yield per year. These benefits demonstrate potential advantages of ocean farming over current farming methods. And it would be a logical fit for New Zealand as well. I mean, our country's an island nation surrounded entirely by water. And yes, this fit is seen to some extent in our current aquaculture industry, but that's shrinking with falling employment. Ocean farming can help resolve this by providing a new market with new supply and demand. Furthermore, a pre-existing aquaculture industry, notably regarding shellfish such as these, would mean that there'd be no lack of expertise in shellfish farming or of marine infrastructure. This would translate into a logical fit for New Zealand itself, as well as an effective integration into our economy. There would also be many benefits of restorative ocean farming. In fact, kelp itself is a superfood, combining a protein content greater than soybeans, a calcium content greater than milk, and an abundance of essential minerals. And in fact, these ocean farms would have a low aesthetic impact, because all you actually see are buoys. However, there is a potential problem with this, and that kelp is actually too effective of a superfood, concentrating too much essential minerals, that it might be possible to overdose on some of them, such as iodine. And it could be a bit of an acquired taste for some people as well. However, restorative ocean farming can also significantly improve water quality, by reducing eutrophication in coastal regions. This is because the kelp and the shellfish filter out the eutrophication causing nitrates from the water, essentially absorbing and storing them before it is harvested and taken away. And also, green-lipped mussels have already been introduced into the Hauraki Gulf to do this in the Save Our Gulf project. Kelp itself also undergoes photosynthesis, absorbing the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide and combining it with water to form oxygen and sugars. But don't all plants do this? However, kelp absorbs five times the amount that land plants do, reducing the extent of the severe problems of global warming and ocean acidification. However, one potential environmental con is if the kelp spread into the environment as an invasive species. And this problem could be easily solved if we only use native kelp species, where they already have biological controls in place. And also, as a blue-collar job that requires relatively little experience or prior knowledge, or a start of ocean farming could provide easily accessible jobs. What's more, the Green Wave Foundation offers numerous benefits to new ocean farmers, such as startup grants and guaranteed purchasing of crops. Such incentives could attract new ocean farmers and in the process provide jobs, reduce poverty, and grow New Zealand's economy. 
However, one potential con is if the supply exceeded the demand, as you'd expect because of the high growth rate of kelp. And this problem could be easily solved because the kelp itself can actually be used from other environmentally beneficial products, such as biofuel and organic fertilizers that don't cause eutrophication. Thus, today you've learned that restorative ocean farming can provide an environmentally sustainable alternative to modern farming. Hopefully you can also see how it's a good fit for New Zealand in particular, as well as how its numerous pros, social, environmental, and economic, outweigh its cons. And thus, that rigid ideal of agricultural farming, which I was subjected to in earlier years, is no longer a one-way road per se. Instead, we can pursue innovative offshoots such as restorative ocean farming in our quest to carve out the future of farming. Thank you.